This is chapter one. In the course linear algebra, system of linear equations. Before I start this chapter, I want to tell you that the course of linear algebra is very very important. It has real life applications. In this course, you have a very good opportunity to learn the mathematical machinery, the basic mathematics of linear algebra. So do it with genuine interest. It's very useful for you in future applications. Okay. So let's begin with the chapter one system of linear equations. First, there are three elementary operations in matrices. What are these? Interchanging two rows R i and R j, written by this symbol. It is read as R i is replaced with R j, or R i is interchanged with R j. It is interchanged with R j. Okay. Second, multiplying a row R i by a non-zero number k. Written as R i replaced by k times R i. Third, adding constant k multiple of a row R j to a row R i means R i is replaced by R i plus k times R j. In short, we can interchange any two rows. We can multiply any row by a non-zero number k, and a constant multiple of any row can be added to any other row. These are three elementary row operations. Very useful. You will understand the importance of these row operations as we move further. Okay, so keep in mind these three elementary row operations in matrices. See this example to understand the application of the three row operations. Suppose A is a given matrix, as you are seeing here. If we apply the operation R one interchange with R two, so what is the output? First row is four eight ten, second is one two three. So after applying this operation, the output is this one. You can see that first second row is now first row and sec uh, first row is second row. So the two rows are interchanged. That is the effect of this operation. Also notice that I'm not writing equal to sign here. It's equivalent sign. In fact, this matrix is row equivalent to it. Next, suppose B is this matrix. In fact, I have written this matrix as B. Okay. Applying the operation R two replaced by one by two R two means we are multiplying the second row by one by two. So what should be the output? The matrix B is equal to which matrix? The second row you can notice is now two four five. The second row is multiplied by one over two, so two four and five. Other two rows are unchanged, of course. So second row is multiplied by one by two. C is this matrix. Say, if we apply these two operations. See the first operation R two is replaced by R two minus two R one. What does it mean? We have multiplied first row by two and then subtracted from R two. So what is the output of this operation? Change will go to R two because R two is replaced. See the output. Zero zero minus one. How do we get it? Minus two plus two zero, minus four plus four zero, 
minus 6 plus 5 minus 1. Got it? Then R3 is replaced by R3 minus 3 times R1. Means multiply first row by minus 3 and then add to the third row. Minus 3 plus 3, 0. Minus 6 plus 5, minus 1. Minus 9 plus 6, minus 3. So this is the output matrix after applying these two operations. So this is how we can apply the three elementary operations in a matrix. What are row equivalent matrices? Two matrices A and B are said to be row equivalent if one can be obtained from the other by applying suitable row operations. And we write with this symbol I already told you earlier. See this matrix is row equivalent to this. Why? Because if I interchange first two rows, I get the second matrix, P. So these two matrices are row equivalent. This is the symbol for row equivalence. Okay. Now a very important definition, row equivalent form, shortcut REF. Read it carefully. A matrix A is in REF if all the zero rows, if any, lie at the bottom. All zero rows, if any, lie at the bottom in the matrix. Means zero rows are the final rows. Second, the first non-zero entry, also called leading entry or pivot entry, in any row is one. And its column lies to the right of the column of the pivot entry of the preceding row. What does it mean? First non-zero entry in each row is 1. And this entry is called pivot entry. The column of the pivot entry lies to the right of the column of the pivot entry of preceding row. See these examples, you will understand this. In this key case, these red ones are pivot entries or leading entries. You can see in the three rows, the non zero entries are 1, 1, 1. Also, the column of, you can see the second pivot entry lies to the column of the, lies to the right of the column of first pivot entry. Same is there for the third pivot entry. So this matrix is in REF. This is also in REF. Zero row, there is a zero row but it lies at the bottom. Pivot entry in the second row is here. So its column lies to the right of the pivot entry of the, means column of the pivot entry in the preceding row. So you understand this, the REF, this is also in REF. All these matrices are in REF. Red color entries are the pivot entries or leading entries of the matrix. Next, RREF, reduced row equivalent form. What is it? In addition to REF, if all the entries above the pivot entries are zero, it is already in REF, but the entries above the pivot entries are also zero. See, in this example, you see there are three uh, pivot entries. Above this pivot entry are saying zero. Above this also these two are zero. So this is RREF. In this case, this is the pivot entry above which there is an element but it is zero. So it is also in RREF. Okay, same way you can notice here, this is in RREF. Means all the entries in the pivot columns 
or the columns carrying the pivot entries are zero except the pivot entry. In this form, the matrix is in R R E F or reduced row iterative form. So you understand R E F and R R E F, okay? So using the elementary row operations, we can convert a matrix into REF as well as RREF. See this example carefully. Suppose this matrix is given and we need to find its RREF. So what is the first step that we should think about? Make one at the first entry. What are you seeing at the first entry? Two. Make it one. Apply a suitable row operation so that it becomes one. Why? Because below it I would like to make zeros. Why am I interested in making one here? Because if it is one, then I can avoid fractions for making zeros here in the row operations. So let's make one at the first place here. How you can, see, there are two ways of doing it. Either you replace these two rows or subtract the second row from the first row. Both options are there. So let's interchange. That's easy. Applying R1, interchange with R2. What do we get? 1, 2, 3 now is the first row. 2, 4, 5 is the second row. Next, you would like to make zero here because below the pivot entry, all entries should be zero in REF. And in fact, you need RREF, so above also you need to make zero. But in this case, there is no entry above, so you need to make zeros below. So what operations are suitable to make zeros here? Here. Multiply first row by minus 2, add to the second and multiply first row by minus 3 and add to the third. You will, make, you will be able to make zeros here. Means apply these two operations. R2 is replaced by R2 minus 2 times R1. R3 is replaced by R3 minus 3 R1. This is the output. Can check. Now zeros are made here. Make one in the second column at the second place because if you make one here then this zero can be put here easily. What is the operation for doing it? Interchange the two rows. Means making one here or non zero at least. Apply this operation R2 interchange with R3. What do you get? Zero means now these two rows are interchanged. Okay. So this zero is now at the bottom in the second column. Now how to make 1 here? Multiply multiply this by minus 1. The second row by minus 1. So apply this operation and make 1 here also. So multiply third row by minus 1. So applying these two operations we get this one. This matrix. This is clearly in the form REF. It is the row equivalent form of the matrix because these three are leading entries, the red ones, and below the first leading entry you are saying zero, second also you are saying zero. This is REF. But you need to make it RREF. So make zeros here. At these three places also you need zeros. So to make zeros in the third column, use the third row. Just like we use the first row to make zeros in the first column. Okay. So it's a very simple order to make zeros or to change the matrix in REF or RREF. 
to make zeros in the first column use first row to make zeros in the second column use second row and to make zeros in the third column use third row so let's use third row because these zeros will not affect here anywhere now so how to make zeros in at these two places at these two places multiply third row by minus 3 and add to the second likewise multiply third row by minus 3 and add to the first if we apply these two operations we get this now you have zeros here to make zero here which operation is suitable use second row because this is second column so multiply second row by minus 2 and add to the first means this operation what do you get the RRDF of the matrix clear so try to make one at the first place itself when you are converting a matrix into REF or RREF because it's useful to avoid fractions try to avoid fractions as much as possible because there are chances of error chances of some calculation mistake if you have introduced fractions so this is clear I guess Converting a matrix to RREF. Next, inverse of a matrix. What is inverse of a matrix? Inverse of a square matrix A is a matrix B such that AB equal to BA equal to unit matrix. This I is unit matrix of the same order as of A and B. And we write A inverse equal to B. This is the definition of inverse of a matrix and this result you are already familiar from your high school mathematics that A inverse exists only when determinant A is non-zero that is A is non-singular and A inverse is given by adjoint A over determinant A but this method you already know we will not do this method here we will find inverse of the matrix using elementary row transformation. See how we do that. For doing that, this result is used. What is it? Applying any row operation in a matrix A is equivalent to applying the same row operation in the product AB. What does it mean? If A has n rows, B has n columns, then what is the product of the two matrices A and B? This is the product. Now what is the first statement? If I apply any row operation, elementary row operation in the matrix A, the first matrix, same effect goes in the product. For example, if I interchange R1 with R2, what is the effect here? These two rows are interchanged or not? Yes. Likewise, you can check the other two row operations. So remember that if you apply row operation in the first matrix, then same effect goes in the product. This is very useful for finding inverse of the matrix C. How is it? It is called go shorten method for A inverse. What we do in this? First write A equal to I times A. I into A. I is the unit matrix of the same order. Now A is the product of these two matrices. So whatever row operation you apply here, same can be applied in I. That's what is written here. Then apply suitable row operations to transform the matrix A on the left to its RREF so that we have I equal to BA and therefore by definition of inverse of the matrix A inverse equal to B. So the idea is that 
apply row operations to convert the left hand side matrix to RRF it will definitely be a unit matrix that inverse exists and apply the same operations on this first matrix in the product I same row operations keep on doing the calculations in the end it's, it is some new matrix B that is inverse of A see this example suppose we are interested in finding inverse of this matrix so first write A equal to I times A I means the unit matrix here you need not to write the full matrix because it remains unchanged so just keep on writing A for this matrix and this side write the full matrix A now apply suitable elementary row operations so that this matrix goes to RREF reduced row employed form so what are the operations first interchange these two so that one is coming at the first place that is helpful after that make zeros at these places already we have done earlier apply these two operations but remember that when you are interchanging the two rows you are doing the same thing in this unit matrix okay whatever row operation you are applying on the left side same row operation you have to apply in this matrix or the matrix in the product with a alright so making zeros here what do we get this matrix same operations apply in this matrix this is the output I did not to tell it step by step you understand what's going on just verify these calculations from your side operations are written here output is written next interchange these two so that you are getting one here R2 interchange with R2 R3 same operation apply here this is the output then multiply these two rows by minus one separately same operation apply on the right hand side first matrix this is the output now this is REF you need to convert it into RREF so use third row to make zeros here means apply these operations you get zeros here apply same operations on this matrix okay after that you need to make zero here at the place of two which operation is suitable replace r1 by r1 minus 2r2 apply the same operation on this matrix finally this is the form that you are looking for because now the left hand side matrix is a unit matrix so you can say RREF of A so this is your matrix B B into A equal to I so this is inverse of inverse of A this matrix is inverse of A understood the Gauss Jordan method to find inverse of A so it is the game of row operations next rank of a matrix it's also very important to know how to calculate rank of a matrix you will see that it's very useful to determine the consistency of a system of linear equations so see the definition here there are other definitions also for finding for rank of the matrix but it's the simplest one it is the number of non-zero rows in REF of the matrix what does it mean a matrix is given to you convert this matrix into REF and then see how many non-zero rows are there number of non-zero rows is the rank of the matrix so suppose this matrix is given its rank is 3 why because if I convert it into REF then I'm seeing that this is REF and uh, all three rows are non-zero 
So its rank is 3. So what about this matrix? Say that I write 1, 2, 2, 4. What is its what is its RF? Make 0 here, which operation is suitable? R2 is replaced by R2 minus 2R1. So I get 1, 2, 0, 0. This is REF of the matrix, but in this REF only one non zero row is available. So, what is rank of A? Rank of A is 1 in this case. Rank of A is 1. Alright. So, this is how you can determine rank of a matrix. Next is system of linear equations. This is the main purpose of this chapter. How to solve a given system of linear equations. Suppose you are given a system of m, m linear equations in n unknown variables x1 to xn and the system is written here. x1 to xn are unknown variables. Number of equations is m. Naturally, these a11, a12, a1, and these are constants. Right hand side, b1, b2, bm are also constants. So, first write the system of these linear equations in the matrix form. So, what is the matrix form? ax equal to b. We have already converted system of linear equations into matrix form in your high school mathematics. So, it's something not new for you. So we can write that given system of linear equations in the form ax equal to b where a is the matrix of coefficients with the variables, x is the column of variables or you can say matrix, column matrix of the variables and b is the matrix of the right hand side constants. After that, the system is said to be non-homogeneous if the right hand side matrix B is a non null matrix. B is non zero matrix. Homogeneous if B is zero means the linear system of equations AX equal to null matrix or zero matrix is called homogeneous system. One more definition we need to know the matrix AB means we are adding an extra column. In the matrix A, what is that column? The column of the matrix B. Okay. This is augmented matrix of A and B. We have just written the two matrices together. This is useful to write augmented matrix. You will see. Now, this is very important result that we will use for solving the problems. Solution of non-homogeneous system. See it carefully. The system AX equal to B of linear equations has a unique solution if rank of A equal to rank of AB equal to N. AB is the augmented matrix. Okay? N is the number of variables. So if rank of A equal to rank of AB equal to number of variables, then the given system AX equal to B has a unique solution. First result. Second. It has infinitely many solutions. If these two ranks are equal, but less than the number of variables. Third, no solution if the ranks are not equal. The rank of A not equal to rank of AB. We need not to prove it through examples itself. You will understand why these results are true. Okay. So this is the way to test the consistency of a system of linear equations, non-homogeneous system of linear equations. So in the first two cases, you can say the system is consistent. In the first two cases, whether unique solution or infinitely many solutions, the system is consistent. Consistent. Consistent means there is a solution, whether unique or infinitely many. Third case, 
there is no solution the system is inconsistent for homogeneous system it's easy for the homogeneous system ax equal to 0 we always have rank of a equal to rank of ab you will see that so ax equal to 0 has a trivial solution if rank of a is n these ranks are always equal because augmented matrix the final column is 0 so in the problems you will see that ranks of rank of a and rank of ab are same, same in case of homogeneous system always so if ranks are same it means system is consistent now the decision that you need to make is whether there is a unique solution or infinitely many in case there is a unique solution then what is the solution x equal to 0 because for this system x equal to 0 is always a solution if you say it's a unique solution then x equal to 0 is the only solution anyway the condition for unique solution is rank of a is n and in this case this is trivial solution the unique solution is the trivial solution x equal to 0 in case rank of a is less than n then infinitely many solutions so homogeneous system is always consistent you can understand from this at least x equal to 0 satisfies it so it is never inconsistent either the trivial solution or infinitely many solution depending on the rank of a let's see this problem Test the consistency of this given system of linear equations. So first write the augmented matrix. What is augmented matrix in this case? 2, 3, 4, 11, 1, 5, 7, 15, 3, 11, 13, 25 means this one. Now to find rank of AB, let's first think about the rank of AB. You will see that rank of A naturally comes from that. So to finding for finding rank of A, what we need to do? Change this matrix into REF. So it's good to make one here to interchange first two rows. This is the suitable row operation. Now one here, make zeros here using the first row. Make zeros in the first column at these places using the first row. So which operations are suitable? These two operations you can see. After applying these operations, this is the output. Now you need to make one here. See which operation is suitable. First R3 is multiplied by minus 1 by 4 because you are seeing that 4 is common to all. 1 is made here, now interchange the 2, R2 and R3, now 1 is available here, you see, without, without introducing fractions, we are able to make 1 here, next, using this 1, you can make 0 here, so which operation, R3 is replaced by R3 plus 7 times R2. Now 0 is available here also. Next make 1 here. So multiply R3 by 1 by 4. Finally the matrix AB is in REF. Once it is in REF you can talk about its rank. In REF how many non-zero rows are there? 3. So rank of A is 3. What is rank of A from here itself? Let's hide this fourth column. If you hide the red, red column, if you hide it, then this is REF of the matrix A, isn't it? This one is the REF of the matrix A. Forget the fourth column. So in the REF of A, how many non-zero rows are there? 
3. So rank of AB is 3, rank of A is also 3, both are equal and how many variables are there in the system? 3. All 3. What does it mean? The system is consistent and it has a unique solution. Alright. Consistent with unique solution. Now how to find the solution from this stage? This is also important. Write back the system in XYZ. So what is first equation? X plus 5Y plus 7Z equal to 15. Second, Y plus 2Z equal to 5 and third Z equal to 4. So Z is directly available. Use this Z into the second equation. Means use back substitution. So using back substitution, we find y equal to minus 3 and x equal to 2 from the first equation. So this is the solution. This method is called Gauche elimination method. Why Gauche elimination method? When you are applying the row operations, you are making 0 here. It means you have eliminated x from the second equation. 0 at these places means you eliminated x and y from the third equation. That's why you are left with this kind of equations. So you have eliminated the variables in fact by changing this into REF. So using back substitution we can write solutions and this method is Gauss elimination. What if I change it to RREF? means make zeros at these places also. So apply these operations. Further apply one more operation. You get the RREF of AB. From RREF what is the advantage? If you write back the equations x is 2, y is minus 3, z is 4. Solution is directly available. You need not to use back substitution. But of course, you have to use extra row operations for converting to RREF. This method is called gauss jordan method. So in summary, in Gauss elimination method, what we do? Find REF of the matrix and use back substitution for solution. In gauss jordan find RREF to get the solution. Okay. So these are simple methods for solving the system of linear equations. Now see the system of equations. What is here? Three equations in four unknowns. This is the augmented matrix. So how to check the consistency? Convert this augmented matrix into REF. From that you will be able to know the rank of AB and rank of A. After that you can decide whether this system is consistent or not. So using suitable row transformations, this is the REF of the matrix. What do you see from here? What is rank of AB? For AB, all the three rows are non-zero. So rank of A is, sorry, rank of AB is 3. But rank of A is 2. Why? Because if you hide the last column, then the two rows are non-zero. Means in A, in REF of A, there are two non-zero rows. That's why rank of A is 2. And rank of AB is 3. Not equal. So this system of equations is inconsistent. Getting? Now you understand those initial results about the consistency. Because now if you write the third equation, third equation gives you 0 equal to 1, which is not true. That's why the system is inconsistent. So ranks of A and AB should be equal for consistency. See this example. 
in which there is an un unknown parameter lambda in the equations. So we'll see how the solution of consistency depends on this unknown parameter lambda. Three equations in three unknowns, but third equation involves unknown parameter lambda. So as usual, write the augmented matrix, convert this matrix into REF. In the process of converting the matrix into REF, this is the form of AB. This is the row equivalent form of AB. From this, what can you say about the rank of AB and rank of A? Does it depend on lambda? Yes. If lambda not equal to 1, lambda not equal to 1, what is rank of AB? What is rank of AB? 3. Even if lambda equal to 1, rank of AB is 3 because third row remains non-zero irrespective of the value of lambda. But what is rank of A when lambda not equal to 1? Forget now the last column, the red one. What is rank of A? Because these entries correspond to A. If lambda not equal to 1, then all three uh, zero, uh, rows are non-zero. The rank of A is 3. If lambda equal to 1, then what is the rank of A? Now there are two non-zero rows, rank of A is 2. So you understand that when lambda not equal to 1, rank of A be 3, rank of A is also 3. Number of variables also is 3. In fact, in this case, you have a unique solution. But if lambda equal to 1, then the ranks are not equal. Rank of A is 2, rank of A is 3, not equal. So in this case, the system is inconsistent. So it depends on lambda. No solution when lambda equal to 1. And unique solution when lambda not equal to 1. So when lambda not equal to 1, you can write back the equations. And using back substitution, you can write the solution in terms of lambda like this okay let me write one more matrix to explain you something further say you have this kind of situation some one more unknown parameter is involved here say it is mu minus 3 lambda and mu both are unknown How to decide the consistency in this case? Depending on lambda as well as mu. It will depend naturally. If lambda not equal to 1, what can you say? Lambda equal to 1, what can you say? Then think about mu equal to 3, mu not equal to 3. If lambda not equal to 1, then whatever is mu, all three rows remain non-zero for A as well as AB. Am I right? Yes. So in this case, the system is consistent and it has unique solution. Irrespective of the value of mu. But if lambda equal to 1, then it depends on mu. There are further two cases. If mu equal to 3, lambda equal to 1, mu equal to 3. What is the output in this case? The two rows are non-zero for A as well as AB. So you have consistent system, consistent. Which kind of solution? Infinitely many because in that case number of variables means it is less than, the ranks are less than the number of variables. Infinitely many consistent and infinitely many solutions. Mu not equal to 3, lambda 1, but mu not equal to 3. Rank of AB is 3 because this makes third row non zero for AB. 
but rank of A is 2. So in this case, it's inconsistent. So this way you can deal uh, the case of two unknown parameters in the system. Okay. See this example also. What are you seeing here? Three equations in five unknowns. X1 to X5. Solution procedure is same. What to do? Write the augmented matrix. Then convert it into REF. This is the REF that you are seeing here. What is rank of AB? All three rows are non-zero. So rank of AB is 3. If I remove the last column, still the three rows are non-zero. So rank of A is also 3. System is consistent. But less than 5. The ranks are less than 5. The number of variables. So how many solutions? Infinitely many solutions. How to write those infinitely many solutions? Write back your system. If you write back, what are the three equations? x1 minus 2x2 plus x4 equal to minus 4. That's what is written here. Same way you can write the other two. So from this x5 is directly available. How many variables? Five variables. Three equations. Two variables are extra. Arbitrary. So let's assume x2 and x4. Some arbitrary real numbers b and d. After that you can write your solutions in terms of b and d. Like this. x5 is fixed but other variables can be written in terms of b and d. Because b and d are any two real numbers, can you, you can choose any two real numbers. So these are infinitely many solutions of the given system. Okay. Next. Row vectors. The rows of a matrix are treated as row vectors. The rows of a matrix are called row vectors. This is the symbol. Just write, you can write this notation also 2, 3, 4, it doesn't matter. Okay, this is a row vector. It is carrying entries of the first row. So there are three row vectors in this matrix that are shown here. Now what is the meaning of linear combination of row vectors? Linear combination of the row vectors is the sum of their scalar multiples. Why I am calling scalar you will understand in the next chapter. But here the scalar means the real numbers. So if I multiply the three vectors or the given row vectors by scalars and add them in this manner then it is linear combination of the vectors. A, B, C are any three real numbers. I multiplied the three vectors by these scalars and add it. So this expression is linear combination. And this is the output of the linear combination. Okay. So linear combination is simple. Just multiply the vectors by real numbers and add them. That is linear combination of the vectors. Row space, the set of all linear combinations of the row vectors is called row space of the matrix. So in this matrix there are two rows, 2, 3 and 4, 7. Write the linear combination here and add them. So this set of vectors where A and B are any two real numbers is the row space of this matrix set of all linear combinations of the row vectors of the matrix is its row space. This is also very useful to remember that row spaces of row equivalent matrices are identical. Means you find row space for this or this one, both are same. This is, this is, you know, R RDF of this. These two matrices are row equivalent. Okay. 
So you find row space for this or this, both are same. But writing row space for this is straightforward. Okay, this is also called simplified form of the row space. So point is that for writing row space of a matrix, it's useful to write its RRDF and then write the row space. Next, see this example. Determine whether this row vector is in the row space of the matrix. If it is in the row space, then naturally it should be linear combination of these three vectors. Am I right? Because row space carries all linear combinations of the row vectors of the matrix. So if it belongs to the row space, then naturally it should be linear combination of these three. So you should be in a position to find ABC from this, from this equality. If you are not able to get ABC from this, that means it does not belong to the row space of this matrix. So how to get ABC? Add these three on the right hand side, then you are getting three linear equations. 3a plus 4b minus 2c equal to 5, like this. Now, this is a system of linear equations. You can solve it for ABC. The solution is this. You are getting a unique solution. So naturally, this vector can be written as linear combination of these three vectors. So it belongs to the row space of the matrix. Okay. So you can check any given vector, whether it belongs to the row space or not of the given matrix. Next, linearly independent row vectors. The concept of linear independence is very important as you will see further. So learn it here itself. Row vectors are linearly independent if their linear combination is the zero vector only when all the scalars in the linear combination are zero. The linear combination becomes zero only when all the scalars or all the real numbers in multiplication are zero. See this example. These two row vectors are linearly independent. Why? Because their linear combination, if I consider zero, then this is possible only when A is zero and B is also zero. Only when both the real numbers are zero. That's why these are linearly independent. Okay. So how to check linear independence of the row vectors? Multiply them by scalars, put that equal to 0, that linear combination. Solve for the scalars or the real numbers, unknown real numbers. If all the real numbers means solution of that homogeneous system, only the trivial solution, mean you get the real numbers 0, 0 only, then the vectors are linearly independent. If you get infinity many solutions, then the vectors are not linearly independent. See this one. Linearly dependent row vectors. What are these? If these are not linearly independent, means means at least one row vector is linear combination of the others. See this one. See this calculation, then you will understand. It is written here also. You are checking these two vectors for linear independence. So multiply first by A, second by B. And put this equal to 0, 0, the 0 vector. So what do you get? A plus 2B comma 2a plus 4b equal to 0 0 from this this is the homogeneous system we get 2a plus 4b equal to 0 
Now the thing is that what is the solution of this? Write it in matrix form. We are not sure. Change it to change it to Rf. So which operation? R2 is replaced by R2 minus 2R1. Make 0 here. But in this process, what do you get? Only one equation is left because second row is 0. Or you can also think it like this. I told you the consistency of homogeneous system. What is rank of A here? 1 which is less than the number of variables 2. So it has infinitely many solutions. Or you can understand it this way also. What is the reduced equation? A plus 2B equal to 0. One equation in two variables. One variable you have to assume arbitrary. So it, this system has infinitely many solutions. Means solutions apart from 0, 0. There are infinitely many solutions. See this one, 2, 4 can be written as 2 times 1 over 2, 2 times 1 comma 2. You getting? So when the vectors are linearly dependent, then always one vector is linear combination of the other. others. You will always find one such combination. But in case of independence, this will not happen. Okay. If the matrix is written in REF, then the non zero rows are always linearly independent. You can check that. So, with this, this concept of system of linear equations is over. I have explained various things uh, in this first chapter. I strongly suggest you to go through the lecture notes for further details and I think it's a very simple chapter that you can go through easily. Okay. Thank you.